All right, everyone, welcome back to the Private Label World Summit. I hope you are enjoying all of the amazing presenters that we have lined up for you this week. And this session is no different. I'm really excited to welcome someone that, that I don't know where, where he got this name, but I call him the godfather of private label. Mr. Chad Rubin is with us, and Chad is an eight-figure brand builder. He's also the founder and CEO of Scubana, a really, really cool tool for 3PL uh, type of sellers, and the author of Cheaper, Easier, Direct. Chad is often asked to speak to large groups and small. In fact, just before we started recording, Chad let me know he just got done speaking to a group from Google. Chad, so great to see you. Welcome to the Private Label World Summit. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, we're honored to have you. I can't think of anyone better to speak to us about all of the exciting things that are going on in this ever-changing world of e-commerce. You know, Chad, in the past couple of weeks, there's been a lot of bombshells dropped for those of us, or for those, I should say, that are in attendance today that maybe are just on Amazon right now. So a lot of us are starting to think about what's next. How do we really become a true brand and not just rely on one channel? And build a business that's uh, scalable and sellable. I can't think of anyone better to talk about all of these exciting things. So take it away, my friend. Okay, awesome. That's quite an introduction. Uh, so today I prepared an interesting deck. Uh, we're going to talk about unlocking your selling potential on Amazon. So let me see if I can minimize the screen here. Hopefully you can still see me. Okay, so unlocking your selling potential on Amazon. Uh, sometimes I digress, but essentially I built an eight-figure business. I start, My background is I started off on Wall Street uh, covering internet stocks and doing research on internet stocks. Uh, I got laid off. My parents had a vacuum store and I started selling their products online. Subsequently, I was like, you know what? There's no real room to make a lot of money as a reseller in the space. And really before people started private labeling, I started building a direct consumer vacuum filter business on Amazon and also off Amazon. Fast forward to today, it's been almost a decade. Uh, Crucial is valued at uh, it's an eight-figure business, and I started a software business called Scubana uh, to empower medium to high-volume sellers to uh, grow and sell across multiple different marketplaces in a unified platform. So for me, one of the things I love doing is I love giving back. I read this great book, Never Eat Alone. It's all about reciprocity and how karma goes just a really long way. And so I am really dedicated my life to helping sellers, empowering them with education and learning and software to help them take their business to another level. So today we're gonna to talk about two things. We're gonna talk about going direct to consumer, and of course, you can't really have a conversation about e-commerce without talking about Amazon. But you can't really have a conversation with me about e-commerce without talking about everything off of Amazon as well. So we have, a, we have some time, let me just set my clock. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so let's get started. So the first thing I'd like to talk to people about is how many layers are, are there between you and your customer. Most of the people today that are watching, I assume, are private label or maybe in between moving towards a private label business. We have to start thinking about and reframing the conversation around building a brand versus just a private label business. I don't even know what private label exactly means anymore. I guess it's just slapping a label on a product, but we want to think about selling across multiple different channels because that's going to be the way to win in a 2017 e-commerce environment. But the first thing to think about is how many layers are there between you and your customer? And most people are gonna say, well, if we're, if we're directly going to consumer, there's only one, but is your uh, factory truly the factory or are they just a trading company? So that's one more layer that makes you that much more removed uh, to go direct to consumer. And I like to get as close to the consumer as I can and as close to the factory as I can. So. You want to cut out distributors, dealers, resellers, middlemen, any other bloated things that are in the middle that take away and erode your gross margin, you want to remove. So here's actually a really interesting chart. Uh, I got it from Everlane, which is a company I, I shop at. I buy all my t-shirts from when I'm not wearing a Scubana shirt. And uh, it's about rethinking the way retail works. So you can see when you buy it from Everlane, they show you the cost and they show you what the end cost is. So they pass on the savings to the customer. 
So traditional retail markups versus a direct consumer approach. So uh, when you are building your business, uh, again, there's a lot of different people. There's a very diverse audience on the line right now listening to this. You have to really think about what is your value proposition? Because Amazon especially uh, just changed some serious things such as product reviews, incentivizing product reviews. That just happened, right? And so if you're going to just come out with another garlic press or another silicon baking mat, A, Amazon has enough of those. And B, what is the difference about, between you and another company out there? Because if you're just going to do sponsored keywords or you're just going to bloat it and try to trick Amazon's algorithm, that's not going to be the way to win any longer in this space. So try to really actually solve a problem. And uh, my, my approach is really I like to do it better, cheaper, easier, and direct. Hence my book, Cheaper, Easier, Direct. So today we bring four different case studies, Bonobos, Warby Parker, Dollar Shave Club, and a shout out to my own business, Crucial Vacuum. We'll go through these quickly uh, and we'll talk about some of the various aspects of these businesses that uh, I really appreciate. So Bonobos, I'm a, I'm a huge supporter. Um, they actually don't even have an Amazon presence, but they came out with this, they were like, you know what? No pant fits well. And for the guys that have more of an athletic build or larger thighs, uh, this, was, this company was created by lacrosse founders. I share the similar problem that pants just traditionally didn't fit well. So they created Bonobos, which is a better fitting pant. Uh, they, ha they do it better, so a better fitting pant. They sell it to uh, free shipping, free returns. You don't even have to worry about it. They make it super easy to purchase with like one click checkout and they're direct to consumer. So they cut out the middleman, gives them very, very high margins. But the interesting thing about my mantra, which is better, faster, cheaper, easier, and direct to consumer, is that they don't actually solve the problem of being cheaper. So right away, I think about uh, ding, 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 there's an opportunity there for us to actually tackle. Like these pants are really only available to the 1% of Americans out there, but what about the 99%? Uh, the next company, Warby Parker, massive valuation. And think about the large total available market that they're going after, but they also were out to solve a problem. They wanted to come out with glasses direct to consumer and do them far cheaper because consumers have been paying for far too long, far too high prices on eyewear. So they do it better. They do it faster. Uh, you can actually do at-home try-ons and you can probably get them faster than uh, having to go back to your, uh, your eyewear store to go pick them up. Uh, they make it super, super e easy, even with digital try-ons and their direct consumer. On top of that, they, have, they do something called what I, can, what I call compassionate commerce, where they have a social mission. Thirdly, Dollar Shave Club was just acquired uh, for a billion dollars, direct to consumer company, going after a very large market. They at the time of acquisition had roughly 10 to 15% market share. And they came out with a gorilla, a really funny gorilla marketing video, and that's how they acquired their customers. But they came out to disrupt the shaving blade market because you don't have to go to CVS and waste gas to go buy your shaving blades. You know you're gonna shave, just get them delivered to your door on a subscription and it's far, far cheaper. So they're doing it better, faster, cheaper, direct to consumer. Yeah, my model is remaining intact. Right now, we're going through a really massive wave where disruption is happening everywhere. And a lot of these stagnant industries, which I'll talk about after this slide, uh, are being disrupted. So for me, when I first started Crucial, uh, the private label game was nowhere to be uh, found on Amazon. And I was really tired of playing musical chairs where I was constantly swapped out of the buy box and uh, there wasn't a lot of money to be made. It was like pennies. So I decided to actually start sourcing my product in uh, 2009, uh, direct to consumer. Uh, we started making filters that were washable and reusable with free shipping, free returns, where I'm learning from all the bigger people that are doing it today and direct to consumer. So I'm fulfilling my own mantra, obviously. Uh, and I'm now, I also have a, a mission of, uh, planting a tree for every thousand filters that we sell. And so uh, we planted a tree last year 
our trees last year in Massachusetts, and this year I'm looking to have something happen in either New York or New Jersey. So this is the, the, the model of how we're different, uh, but you can see that we, we don't uh, sort of keep our prices high, we keep our prices low uh, to prevent others from coming in the industry because right now there is a army of people moving into every category on Amazon. Thankfully with this promotion uh, incentive change, I think that it'll become a, only the strong survive environment on Amazon for the future, which is fantastic which is gonna prevent a lot of the people who have built a solid brand to prevent them from moving into the brand. So we keep our prices low uh, and we, do, we try to make it very unique uh, where we are their washable, their free shipping, free returns, hassle-free packaging, and we have uh, compassionate commerce built into it. Which unlike original filters don't, aren't even washable and reusable because they want you to just throw them away and buy new ones. So I've been able to take this. And one of the big nuggets for me was when I first started, and this is a learning mistake for myself and a teaching moment for everybody listening, when I first started Crucial Vacuum, I thought it was gonna be years till I disrupted the industry. And it really, it was like a year maybe. And I'm, I'm always adding to my product line, but I disrupted the industry and brought out product in a very quick time frame. And so I picked a brand, a Crucial Vacuum, really pigeonholed me into not being able to grow beyond that. So I had to start these other micro brands until I just decided to start one brand to house it all called Think Crucial. So when you are building your brand, think about the name that you're choosing. It's extremely important. And by the way, I'll talk about this at the end, at the end but I designed my logos through logotournament.com, which is a bidding process for logos. Because like when you're a private label on Amazon, you don't really need to have a logo because no one really was thinking about their brand as a private labeler. But now as Amazon's changing policies, and maybe those that are successful are trying to translate that success on other marketplaces, uh, a logo is extremely important, especially the color choice. So the story hasn't changed for me. I'm just changing, uh, really modifying the car. I'm changing the system to make it work better. And so are these other companies. They're changing and challenging the system to work better. And there's always somebody in the audience that's like, Chad, well, you didn't create the vacuum filter. What's so special here? Well, Henry Ford didn't invent the car, right? He just figured out a way to sell them better and build them better than anybody else. Warby Parker didn't invent the eyeglasses. Bonobos didn't invent pants. Again, we're just changing and modifying. We're not recreating the wheel. So the rise of direct consumer and disruption is all around us right now. Uh, these are a couple of examples of companies I love, Deathwish Coffee and Cotopaxi. Cotopaxi happen to be uh, both on Amazon and off Amazon brands that are also Stubana customers, very, very large businesses. Casper is direct consumer mattresses. Cotopaxi is like direct consumer outwear gear uh, that you can wear outside on hikes. Harry's is a, uh, another shaving blade model, and Deathwish Coffee is direct consumer coffee, the strongest in the world. But in order to beat the incumbents that have traditionally owned the various spaces, you have to beat them at their own game. And right now, these traditional brands do not understand e-commerce. They don't get Amazon, but they don't get off Amazon. They don't get any of it. They don't get the E before commerce. And I think that's one huge advantage that Amazon sellers have in their pocket right now is that they already get how to ship products for the most part. They get how to source it. Now it's about getting your product on other channels and uh, managing that on an oper in an operationally sound way. So, <laughs> interestingly enough, these are the things I would look at if I would look to disrupt verticals today. So, the first piece is you want to go after companies that don't have a one-to-one -one relationship with their consumer. Uh, they sell through the traditional models that I put out there before, they're, they have distributors, dealers, all these middlemen in the middle, but the most important thing is they have no connection to the customer. So when I say connection, it's either Twitter, Facebook, any one-to-one -one relationship, a newsletter, and you want to pick a market where most of the incumbents are, are actually uh, really bogged down by their channel conflict. So they sell to their brick and mortar space, they have very expensive marketing tactics and they have high logistics costs and they have a lot of employees carrying their business and those are really ripe for disruption. 
because the direct consumer companies can be a lot more nimble. So you want to go after these companies who are scared of ch channel conflict. They don't want to uh, lose existing business. And they're, they won't even pivot to try to beat you uh, in this new business model. And I think that's a real big differentiator. Again, we're talking about not another garlic press or silicon baking mat on Amazon, but solving really real, real problems, going after large total available markets. So that being said, we can't talk about e-commerce without understanding how some of the bigger players on Amazon are doing it today. And uh, so I go through some things on Amazon that I think are important for people that are listening to understand. And then we'll talk a little bit about off Amazon. So the first one is, why are we talking about Amazon? Well, Amazon uh, has, product, product searches are happening on Amazon today. 43% of people are starting their product search on Amazon versus 11% on Google. And I would probably assume that most of those people that start their search on Amazon most likely don't leave because they love the selection, the quality, and the price. Uh, so in 2015, the fourth quarter, 50% of e-commerce growth was attributed just to Amazon alone. Like they are a massive monopoly. And Amazon sold more in the second quarter versus the next eight largest retailers. So you can't talk about e and commerce without talking about Amazon, but I think there's a massive opportunity that nobody's tackling that's off of Amazon as well. And to be a true business uh, that's scalable and also not just selling on a sales channel, but a true business, you want to be everywhere you can because it doesn't hurt to. It doesn't hurt to diversify your revenue. And I always say, like, I would never invest in a stock that has one customer. Right now, those that are just selling on Amazon today, Amazon is your one customer. You've literally have invested your entire life savings in Amazon. And that could be gone in seconds. Amazon is really changing the game right now, making it harder for resellers and private labelers. With the, with the, the gating, the brand gating that they just did, gets rid of a lot of the small sellers. Right now in the fourth quarter, Amazon's actually not letting new customers ship FBA. And they have just removed incentivized reviews, which has helped smaller sellers compete with larger sellers in a very tight window of a time frame. So you want to pick your spot on Amazon. You want to follow the model of doing it better, cheaper, and direct. And you want to own the customer narrative of what people see on Amazon. But by doing that, you also achieve higher margins. So let's just look at some things on Amazon of really problem solving. So a lot of sellers I talk to, and I talk to a lot of them on a daily basis because they're looking at Skubana as a software. Uh, I really encourage the problem solving piece. And they're like, well, how do you find problems? How do you do it? And I'm like, well, do you have a review software? Do you, do you know how many reviews you're getting on, 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 on a product? Yes, we do know how many reviews, okay? But you don't know the quality of the reviews. You know the quantity, but you don't look at the quality of the reviews. So the first thing I like to do is type in something that I'm passionate about in, into Amazon. I use Amazon as a database. Most people are using all the same softwares to do their product research, but at the end of the day, it doesn't help you with the qualitative piece. And if everyone's using the same technology to do this research, then what's your edge? Because you have to be willing to do things that people aren't willing to do to win today. So looking at reviews, firstly, the first thing I do is I type in a product into Amazon, like coffee, or pick something you're passionate about. If you're passionate about the fact that the iPhone 7 doesn't have a headphone jack anymore, choose that. Or if you're passionate about yoga, or if you're passionate about paleo eating, choose something that's very dear and near to your heart, or you're passionate about building drones, and do some searching on Amazon. So you'll start seeing if you actually sort, in the, so once you pick a category after you search, you have to uh, pick a category, home and garden, let's just say, or toys. And in the top right-hand corner, it'll let you search by featured, uh, which used to be called bestsellers. And you find these bestsellers and really just understand, and of course, look at the best-selling rank on them, look at the frequently bought together, uh, which is important. 
but you want to also be analyzing the reviews of these bestsellers. So Amazon is a massive science project of data and you can search reviews. They literally have a search button for reviews. And instead of looking at the quantity of the reviews, you want to actually look at the quality of the review. So for example, for this P, this AeroPress, which is a espresso coffee making unit, it looks like a surgical device, but it happens to be the best selling coffee press on Amazon. It's not the best seller anywhere else. And this unit comes with a filter that uh, people have complained about being bleached and offering a taste to the filter. So we came out with the stainless steel filter based on what we started reading in these reviews. So you can curate and understand the narrative of the customer to uh, build out a, a solid product that solves a problem. So the next thing, as we start looking at listings, and I, I always look at people's listings when they call me up to see like how they can be improving and, and what's happening. And I like to look at companies that are absolutely killing. It. So two of them that I look at uh, for different reasons, Anchor is the number three biggest seller on Amazon, but it's also the first biggest seller that's private label. Uh, and they are, whatever they're doing, they have a huge team that understands Amazon and definitely has it right. So if you look at just the title alone of Anchor, uh, this title is not keyword stuffing. There's a lot of people that stuff keywords as much as they can, which sometimes actually suppresses listings. So I think there's a 200 character limit on listings titles, depending on your category, but they put in everything that's needed for the title. So in this case, ultra compact portable, right? Where they're talking about a power bank, high speed charging. These are value propositions that they bake into the title. So they're making it extremely keyword dense and it's very precise and compact and uh, they're making it compelling. And we'll talk about compelling in a second. Here's another one, Alpha Grillers, their own brand. They make uh, thermometers for meats. So they put in pen thermometer, instant red meat. It's fast. It's a digital cooking tool with a temperature chart. So I think those are fantastic titles. Uh, I think they really get the job done. But they also put in there instant and ultra fast, and they include an internal temperature chart. So the one of the other big differences between Google and Amazon is that Amazon is not only tracking when you type in a keyword, if that, purchase, if that person buys, they literally have a table that they say, this person typed this keyword and this person bought on this date. And this person typed in this keyword and this person bought on this date. And they're keeping a table, so they're tracking people's purchases through conversion, which is why it's so important to have compelling content. And I'm gonna really nail this home as we walk through these. It's important to make sure that your listings are compelling. Whereas on Google, if you're advertising on Google, Google cares about unique listings. They want your content to be unique. They don't really care if you convert or not. They just care that somebody paid for that click and they went to your site and it's relevant to that click. Amazon really cares about conversions. So the next piece is photos. And one of the really important things that Anchor is doing with their photos is that they actually put value props that make it more compelling to buy their product inside the photo. So charge faster, save time. Uh, if you look at their photos, you'll see they, they have amazing photos that is all about getting people to purchase. So yeah, we'll talk about bullet points in the next one, but how many people read anymore? That's why we actually make our, our that's why a lot of sellers today are making their, um, the intro in for the bullet point in capital letters because they want that to stand out because nobody's really going to read your entire listing. But Anchor really figured out early on and they said, you know what, let's do, let's do photos and let's make value propositions in them because that's, I mean, if you look here, charge faster, save time. It fits the iPhone 5, 6, and Android and it tells you how much you save. To me, this is a very compelling photo to make me want to purchase. It's not just something that was made on Fiverr and thrown up on, Am on Amazon. Here's another nugget because I really want to make sure people are leaving this presentation and getting a lot of value from it. I, I've gotten a lot of people asking me about 
how do I get my product associated with another product in the frequently purchased, frequently bought? And what I've seen, the way to do this, to try to, uh, to work the algorithm on Amazon, is that you can actually offer promo codes through Seller Central, promotions, that help to get your product paired with another product. So you can see here, there's a special offer, 25% on Alpha Gorilla Original Grill Brush when you purchase this thermometer. Enter the code LPNKTC3GJ, whatever. So that's one really solid way to get your, your, your product paired with another, another product and also to increase your average order value. Amazon is looking at all of this stuff. When people come to their site, they're saying, did they buy and what else did they buy with it? Again, this is just one extra gem for it to throw into the mix. So uh, reviews. This is interesting. There's been a lot of people freaking out about this review thing. And I don't know if it really matters to, it goes back to compelling. It doesn't matter to a lot of people if you have 100 five-star reviews or if you have 250 five-star reviews or even if you have 18 five-star reviews. If you have a solid listing that people are, purchasing on and it's compelling and those sessions that people visit your site on are converting with that buy box button, Amazon's going to push you up the algorithm. There's no secret sauce behind it. Uh, yeah, you can get more people to buy a product quicker through having a, a promo, um, a, you know, using one of these deal sites to leave a review, but Amazon really needed to protect the integrity of their platform and make sure people trusted their reviews, which takes precedent. So yes, people were probably trying to game the system a bit, but I wouldn't freak out. I would say that there's other ways you can be doing this. So number one is look at the review. And if you see, if you go to your competitor's reviews, look at those reviews and see the negatives and take those negatives and bring them into your listing and put them in your bullet points, put them in your photos, take a negative and turn it into a positive. So for example, if you're selling an American flag and your competitor is selling one in China, that's made in China and yours is made in the United States. And you've looked at reviews of people saying, ironically, this American flag is made in China. You should be putting in your review. This is not some um, off the shelf Chinese product, like have American pride, buy American made, support an American flag. And that is one great way to get people to compel them to buy your product. Um, the other thing I think is really interesting that's, that nobody is talking about, look, these deal sites are going to keep telling you that you should use them because you, they, people can or cannot leave a review, wink, wink. But I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even I don't, I'm not even going there right now. I don't even think it's necessary to, to do that. You can have a couple of your friends, family, buy your products. But the other thing that Amazon did recently that I looked at on Seller Central was that in the promo code at the top, that tab at the top, or promotions, advertising at the top, there's a giveaway now. So now you can actually utilize that to give away product, uh, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna, be, it's gonna start being verified. On top of that, I think Amazon's also launching a Vine program for Seller Central. So they're gonna start monetizing these, these things that they're taking away uh, from other companies that, are, that, are, that, are, that have been traditionally winning, like an AMZ Tracker or a, a Snag Show. So that's reviews. We may have questions at the end of this, but I, I think that's a solid approach on reviews. I also love videos and reviews. I think videos are really important. If you can get people to leave, if you can actually get those customers that are buying from you using like a feedback genius and get them to leave reviews and do some sort of promo or giveaway, it says if you leave um, a video review, it'd be much appreciated. I think that's really a great way to win. You'd say, look, you don't have to leave a review but we would love for you to leave a review. We're a small family business. We're struggling. Please leave us a review. And I'd love to add you to our discount club uh, and give you a, a, a free product outside of this for leaving a great review. Or here's a $25 gift card. Some sort of trade-off that makes it feel good for the person that's leaving that review. But I think video is extremely important and increases conversion because conversion is all about compelling content with video. So the other thing I like to do, and this is just like bonus, so I wasn't sure if we would have enough time. I think I'm, I'm running good on time. So I'm just trying to throw a lot of interesting things in here that I've learned along the way uh, to help everyone in the crowd today. 
So spying on comp competition is really important. So first of all, I, I don't even shop in retail stores anymore. I just shop on the internet. Everything is bought on the internet. And I do that not just because of, it's convenient and not because uh, of price, but I do that because it's actually a learn, it's a teaching moment for me. So when I shop at some of these uh, bigger companies, I can see how they're shipping, how the unboxing experience is. So for example, if you look at just an Amazon company like Alpha Griller that I was talking about, I test purchased their product and they uh, got me to subscribe with, with this little thing that was in the box for a discount club. They've built a discount club of loyal people to get people. So when they come out with a new product, they remarket to these loyal people because the likelihood of somebody that's already bought from you once will buy from you again if, if they're, and they're loyal. They bought, like, the hardest thing is to get people to buy from you. So Alpha Grillers, I suggest you check out their product. I have nothing to do with them. I don't get any affiliate commissions from that sale, but I think it's really, really, really important to see how they built a really cool product and they, they really get you to want to be part of the movement. So another thing I do is like uh, when I buy from all these other brands, I look at the shipping label that it comes from. Like what does the shipping label say on it? Did they ship it what, with what carrier? But what is the address of where they shipped it from? Again, this is for off FBA stuff. This is for other brands like if I was buying Mac Wilt Weldon underwear or Birchbox or uh, Bonobos pants. Like I know that Bonobos is using Quiet Logistics as their 3PL. I know that Warby Parker is using Jenko as their 3PL, which is now acquired by FedEx. But when you shop online, not just with com competitors, but with just people that are absolutely kicking ass, it's a learning experience. And the unboxing experience is extremely important. The other thing I've been doing lately is I've been looking at bill of ladings because bill of ladings of whatever is being imported into this country is held in these databases. So there's a lot of interesting uh, intelligence you can learn by using some of the companies that are on this, uh, on this slide right here. But it really removes guessing by actually learning from what others are doing that have a large marketing budget. It actually removes a, a ton of guessing. Guesswork is removed from it and they've already done the heavy lifting. So you can just use that to your advantage. So um, another thing I think I was one of the really the first movers in the on Amazon world, off Amazon world to actually have a 3PL. So a uh, little backstory, I uh, used to run a three, uh, a, my own warehouse with 17 or so employees and the, it started to be uncontrollable between all the low value uh, employees that I hired that I didn't screen appropriately beforehand without the right inventory software uh, that was out there. And then the software doesn't support all these other channels and just, it didn't, I didn't have a unified platform to run it at the time until I built Stubana. But in terms of just the warehouse alone, it's a repetitive low value task that I'm letting somebody that's to do, I'm letting someone do it. That's their core competency. On top of that, I guess you have another competitive advantage by leveraging their rates that nobody can touch. And I taught them FBA. So like FBA prep is extremely important to me and doing the kidding and bundling that's necessary for FBA prep. So look, you can check out ecommercerenegade.com and uh, you can download. Once you sign up, you'll get this email with a really, really solid blog post we did on 3PL. And you'll be part of the, the family and part of my network. Uh, but my life opened up by getting rid of just that low value repetitive task and automating it with someone who can do it far better than myself. And then I started building a software that would automate my entire business. And now I have two employees running my entire business. Everything else is automated with algorithms and technology and this third party warehouse, which is an outsourced warehouse. So the other piece is all about diversifying yourself. And I, I say this time and time again, and I've had so many arguments with various sellers being like, but I'm doing so well, so well on Amazon. Why should I ever leave? Amazon is like a gateway drug. Once they give you that, once they give you a little taste, you just want more and more and more. But if you want to build a truly sustainable business, 
you want to be diversified across as many marketplaces and sales channels as you possibly can. And it's going to start getting a lot more competitive and a lot more tough on Amazon. So why not? The incremental cost of going off Amazon is negligible. You just need a platform that can help you sell off Amazon. That's the other problem that I see. I, I always just notice problems, right? And you want to solve problems. So the problem that I noticed is that there was one trick ponies out there. There was a feature for this that did, uh, that did profit. There was a feature for this that did uh, inventory FBA. There was a feature for this that did another, it was another feature, but none of them were solutions. So when you pick your software, whatever you choose, whether it's Ubana or another software, make sure that it's not limiting your upside, that it's not placing restrictions on your business from being able to scale and to grow. So selling online is like playing Monopoly. You want to be everywhere on the board to win. I think I'm missing a few really vital ones. Walmart just opened up the market, a marketplace and is absolutely crushing it. Uh, Jet.com was just acquired by Walmart. I think I'm missing Overstock on here. I'm missing Wayfair. And I'm also missing the ease of building a shopping cart like Shopify or BigCommerce, a SaaS platform to start going off channel and diversifying your business. I can't underline that enough. I was suspended. I'm sure those people that are listening today have been suspended. I've been suspended more than once, and it is not pretty. So after I got suspended, I said, never again. Never again am I going to be just tied to one platform or one channel. I want to be everywhere or win. So uh, we're, we're running up on time here. Here's a few books that I've read uh, that have helped me through this process of the entrepreneurship journey and e-commerce in general. So the first one, Never Eat Alone, like I talked about, it's about reciprocity and giving back. Uh, because maybe if I help somebody on this, on this call today, one day they'll help me and I have no idea, we'll, we'll cross paths one day. Uh, maybe I'll see you at the Prosper Show and, and whatever, you'll buy me a drink or coffee. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk wrote a book called Jab, Jab, Red Hook, which was instrumental in me changing my approach for social media marketing. And so that's another approach for Amazon seller. If you just want to stay on Amazon, fine, right? You can be narrow-minded, that's all good. But maybe you want to actually start marketing your product on Facebook to get more people coming to your page to convert so that you get higher, more ranking that happens. And there's a lot of promos you can be doing through Seller Central now that they've launched that make it super easy and uh, that are helpful to make this happen. Uh, the hard thing about hard things is just about the hard thing about creating a business, the software business, uh, and what you go through. Delivering happiness is all about customer support and delighting customers. Cheaper, easier, direct is the book that I've, I've written. Uh, I think it'll help majority of the people that are on the call today. Uh, and virtual freedom is about systemizing your business with operational procedures and how to let go and outsource low value repetitive tasks that you should not be doing with your life. So we all have a bucket list. Uh, we also have an effort list, you know, a to-do list and a to-not-do to list. And I think that's part of what Virtual Freedom talks about and it's how I've been able to create an outsourced army of virtual assistants to help me get this ball down the field and to win in e-commerce across all the marketplaces that I sell on. So if you like what you heard today uh, and you want more, please support my book. Of course, it's on Amazon. It's $2.99. It's probably the best $2.99 that you'll ever spend. Uh, and it's, the, it's cheaper than a large venti latte at Starbucks. <laughs> Yeah, but the advice uh, that we just got from Chad Rubin is priceless. Thank you, my friend. What an incredible presentation. I have to tell you guys, you know, it was seeing Chad speak at last year, I guess last year, still this year technically, right, <laughs> for a few more months, but this year's Prosper show out in Salt Lake City um, that first really got me, it was kind of like a kick of the rear to, to get off of uh, – my, my thought process, Chad, about just selling on Amazon. I, I was already thinking long-term and wanting to build a brand, uh, but some of the principles that you shared there were really the, the kind of the kindling that started me thinking bigger and dreaming bigger and uh, just jotted down some notes. Some of my favorites, only the strong survive. I loved your take on the review changes and the brand gating. You know, there's been so much 
so many changes with Amazon specifically over the last couple of months, and it's really easy to look at them as negative changes. Mm -hmm. One of the, the things I'm proudest about is so far all of the presenters we've had here at the Private Label World Summit have taken a choice to look at these as positive changes, and I really believe that for our attendees, if, if they want to survive, they want to be that strong that survives, um, then they've got to start looking at things like this as opportunities and not just challenges, right? And that's uh, a, a big part of your presentation. You have to be willing to do something other people aren't willing to do. Focus on quality of reviews and not the quantity of them. So many golden nuggets, my friend. I can't thank nice. you enough. My favorite at the very end, diversify yourself. <laughs> so thanks for that. You guys, join me at thanking Mr. Chad Rubin. Check out his book, Cheaper, Easier, Direct. There's a link right under this presentation. You can check that out. And also check out Scubana as well. Thank Chad, thank you, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm.